Welcome to TFL Talking Trucks podcast. And on this show, we're going to dive deep into the world of trucking because I have a very special guest. I have Alex from Toe Piglet. How's it going, Andre? Hey, dude, I I've been watching your videos for a while. Um, actually, you did a home edition video for us. Uh, back d during the kind of the height of COVID. Right, about a year ago now, or just yeah. over a year ago. I remember that. It was about the 2020 Ford F-350, and that was the truck that I literally just picked up, and so that's why I was pretty excited about that, and so I appreciate you guys actually featuring that in the video. Yeah, well, that's very cool because one of those, it was a new Super Duty, right? Correct. It was one of the new generations, the updates one, and you put a heck of a lot of miles on them because... Is it fair to say you're kind of a hotshot, you know, trucker dude? Right. So, I mean, hotshot, generally the term is, I mean, it's like almost applied to basically anything that's other than a semi truck. Yeah. But to be more specific, it's basically a F-350 dually with a 40 foot flatbed gooseneck trailer. Um, that's the hotshot setup that I'm currently running. And at the time, yes, it was. I really feel like it was one of the first Super Duties out there. And I, because I do a lot of miles, you know, I'm working with it all the time. I got it to 10,000 miles really quickly. And I think that's where I, I sent to you guys about a 10,000 mile review or yeah. uh, something like along those lines. Right. If I remember correctly, it was something and like that. And then I think you did another update with a lot more miles. Correct. Yeah. Right. And that truck I ended up keeping because then COVID and whatnot, all that that stuff has started happening. That truck I ended up keeping till 75,000 miles and I did a 50,000 mile review, a 75,000 mile review. So I did a couple And this is within like a year. Yeah, well, yes. no, that was like within seven months. Yeah, within seven months. So so on this show, so Alex, you're a business owner, right? Correct. Um, well, you do have your own uh, YouTube channel. So unless, you know, if in case you don't, uh, you haven't seen Toe Piglet, it's on YouTube also. Um, it is a business. So what kind of freight do you move or how does that work? I mean, do you work with private customers, big companies or what? So uh, most of the freight that I haul right now or the, that the entire company hauls, I don't do much hauling anymore. I'm off the road uh, somewhat permanently. But most of the freight that we haul, we get it from a load board. And usually those are brokers that posted it there and they have their own customers. So most of the time, I don't know who their customer is. If it's the shipper or the receiver, I don't know. But I've delivered to residential houses. I've delivered to, you know, big, gigantic businesses. It, I just, it depends. And I don't know which one. So it's just customer. kind of a dispatch service for freight. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, some, something like this. So I want to talk to you. So this episode, I want to kind of focus on you have a lot of experience, even personal experience and also business experience with several different trucks. Right. right. Not just Fords, because right. you also have some Ram right. Cummins trucks, uh, the big uh, dualies uh, generally, um, and also kind of, you know, stories from the road, so to speak, right. that type of stuff. So, so when did you start? Uh, so I started at 23 and I, the, what I did is I started as a hotshot driver. I remember getting a job. I was just a driver driving somebody's single wheel, uh, Ram 3,500 crew cab long bed. And I, I drove for four months as a driver. And then I was like, you know what? I could go buy my own pickup truck. Okay. And I'm 23 with terrible credit, no job history. Okay. <laughs> and the interest rate that I got was whatever it was six, seven years ago, almost now the interest rate I got was 16.9% on a $51,000 truck loan. And so my, my interest rate was like $800 a month. And I've, I've covered this multiple times in my videos and yeah. explained how that was a terrible deal because then I never ended up getting out of that hole, but I bought my own first brand new car. That was my first brand new car, my truck for work. And it was a Ram 2015 Ram 3500 Cummins um, AS69 RC transmission, four by four crew cab, long bed, single wheel truck. Mm -hmm. And I was driving that for a couple of years. And that's where the whole name came with Toe Piglet because a lot of guys call their trucks the Toe Pig. And I figured if I'm, I don't have a CDL and it's not a dually, it's a Toe Piglet. And so that's where the, the whole name came from, from that a single rear wheel truck, non CDL. Yeah, and also and along the way you were making videos, right? And kind of talking about your experiences and that was like five years ago or so? No, so I've only been doing YouTube since 2018 roughly. I think okay. in 2019 I got finally monetized with a thousand subscribers. Okay. So 2019 I only had a thousand subscribers. So um, I appreciate the you know the people watching me and whatnot. It's, I'm, I'm impressed, the genuinely impressed. But I, the, the truck, I, was, I got it to, um, to, to like 250,000 miles. And that's when I figured, I'm like, well, it's at 250,000 miles. I have a couple of years in the business now. I kind of know what I'm doing. Let me start doing some videos about it. Because generally, there wasn't that many hotshot videos 
like out on YouTube at the time. There was like maybe one or two channels. I was like, well, since people are probably asking and wondering about it, let me make some videos now that I do have some time on the road and some experience. Yeah, so uh, I guess p- part of this conversation, uh, well, not just because you know you're you're here in our studio, so right. which which was really cool, but also I'm trying to figure out from the real world perspective, what's the best heavy duty truck, kind of for this kind of long haul. And you mentioned you have experience with Ram, you have experience with Ford. What about GM? Do you have any GM truck experience? Uh, okay, so I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have any GM experience, okay. and I wouldn't recommend a GM. Okay, why, why is that? Uh, uh, so I mean. Okay, now this isn't like firsthand experience, but this is like me trying out trucks. Like this is me going for a test drive. And it's like the back, because we take out the back seat and we install a bed in the trucks, and that's where we sleep in in a bed instead of our back seat, you want the cab to be as long as possible. That rear cab needs to be long. And from what I've seen, a GM has the smallest cab in the rear. Okay, smallest cab. So and I know, like, you can look up their uh, st- like measurements all on Edmonds, but uh, I, I'm telling or you, that, uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. So, <laughs> but that those numbers do not translate to real world. The so, doors are way smaller on the GMs. So, what do you mean length? Are you talking about width or like legroom? Uh, lengthwise. Correct. Legroom lengthwise. And on the Ford, I really think after trying the Ram, second Ford is second to the Ram Mega Cab, but nobody gets a Ram Mega Cab as a work truck. That just doesn't make sense. So it goes Ram Mega Cab with the, you know, that one has the most space. Mm-hmm. Then it goes Ford. Then it goes Ram. And then it goes Chevy. Okay. So you were looking at it not just from perspective of you know, horsepower, torque, towing, but also what is it like to live with every day, basically. Correct, because, I mean, you, you're driving in your truck for 11 hours, right? Think about it. And after the end of your shift, after your 10 and a half, almost 11-hour drive, what do you do? You unbuckle your seatbelt, and you jump right back into the back seat where you have a retrofitted mattress. And it's like the more comfortable you can make that, the better it is for you and your, you know, your job. Yeah, totally. So, but they've redesigned the GM trucks in 2020. Have you tried the newer generations? Right. That's the one somebody, so I was at a gas, I was at a truck stop, not a gas yeah. station, but I pulled up to a truck stop in my Ford. I'm like, oh, I got a Ford. I'm so cool. Then this guy pulls up with a Chevy, brand new, 8,000 miles. I'm like, hey, let me try out your Chevy. And he let me drive it around the parking lot. You know, I jumped into it. And I must say the redesigned entry level, like trim uh, Chevy mm-hmm. is just it's not a good truck. I, it's just not. I know just I might felt right. It's okay. just, the seat. I, I've never sat on such a poor quality seat. It's just so flat and it's so low. I don't know why. That's probably why it has more headroom than the other trucks because it's like you're sitting on the floor. <laughs> okay. You the, the seat is really that low, and I'm six yeah. three. So it's like I felt it. You're getting in. Like I think the Tacoma has the same problem. Yeah, they put the low. seat yeah. really low. Yeah. I don't like that. You know, I want to be right. in like a captain type of looking over the road situation or in that kind of seating position. And and so it's like I got into it. The other thing, we, it was dark outside, and like in my video, I complained about the Ford a year ago uh-huh. with the headlights. Right, right. The, the and G- you were right, probably. R- yes. Definitely. This Chevy, it was a Chevy 3500 Dually, just like I would have gotten. And it like was a, a work, work truck. Like a work truck version. Yeah, work truck spec. It had the halogen, you know, entry yeah. level headlights. And those headlights, I'm not joking, they were worse than both the Ford and the Ram. And I understand you could make a gripe and say, oh, Alex, that's because you're getting a work truck. Well, I, I mean, I'm using it for work. And so it's like those headlights were absolutely terrible. And like, I just would not get that truck. I mean, unless you, then you have to upgrade to LEDs or something, you know, you'd have to upgrade for sure. But in that truck, it's just, it's un, like you can't use it. Okay. So, so, okay. So f- for some of those reasons, you did not use GM trucks. So now, so now let's focus on Ram and Ford. Okay. So, um, and I'm really curious because, you know, we test a lot of trucks, but it's usually a week at a time. Right. And it's usually, you know, shorter distances, maybe 500 miles in a week. You, you, you have, you know, hundreds or Hundreds of thousands of miles. I, yeah, I think I'm at so, 700,000 miles right now. Over just the, yourself. Over the road. By myself, yeah. driving the trucks. 700. Because my first Ram, I got it to 492,000, and then I sold it. So 492,000, my single rear, rear wheel Ram. Yeah. And then since then, I've been switching Ford's Rams through the Enterprise Rental Program. Right? And so um, I would, like, 
to, I want to just put a disclaimer, essentially, like, guys, this is just kind of my opinion. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's like, I don't do my own maintenance. So I, I don't know. But generally, it's, uh, this is kind of the thought process, right? So let's say you want to get a truck for just for you, you're going to maybe commute, maybe you're going to go to uh, the occasional weekend, the occasional jet ski that you need to tow the occasional boat, I would strongly recommend a Ford. Okay. Strongly recommend. And I know that's kind of surprised because I, I know the Ram has been nothing but reliable to me. Okay, and I'll put an asterisk on that, but, um, I would recommend a Ford. The 10 speed in the Ford gets like 30% better fuel mileage than the Ram. And, and it has less brake applications in your guys' video. When you did the max towing, yeah, it has way the, less yeah. brake applications than the Chevy. So even though the Ram, uh, the Ford and the Chevy have the same 10 speed, it stops better. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on top of that, the Ford has better space. But on the other hand is I, I recently had, uh, I was talking to a technician and he said, the Ford is one of the only manufacturers out of the big three that doesn't lock their OBD2. Okay. And so it's like, now you need special, um, special, uh, devices mm -hmm. to read the codes on Chevy and on Ram. You don't need it for Ford. And it's like, Unfortunately, I don't like. I don't want to be forced to use the dealership all the time, and I think that's what the right to repair thing is all. They're fighting all that, mm -hmm. uh, forcing consumers to use dealerships only when they should be able to use anybody they want. But th that's not the point. The point is, if you're gonna do, if you're just nine to fiving, occasional towing, I would strongly encourage you with the Ford. Now, if you're gonna be a full time hotshot, the problem with the new rams okay there's two years you absolutely have to avoid that's 19 and 20 those have the cp4 i don't know what bosch i don't know what mistakes they made mm -hmm. but it's like for some reason those are no good trucks so absolutely avoid 19 and 20. you're, you're talking about injectors or the, the jaw uh the bosch cp3 fuel pump oh the fuel pumps yeah uh, yeah cp4 my bad it's this yeah so yeah. in the 2019 and 2020 they put a cp4 and those have like an extremely high fuel your failure rate mm -hmm. um just because they're so tight tolerances and the fuel in america is not as good as it is in europe and in europe they use the bosch cp4 fuel pump okay that's the high pressure fuel pump that yeah, yeah. Like. so um the uh, the so yeah the rams so 19 those are and 20 avoid, yeah. right 1920 you avoid those the problem i have with the 2021s is the redesign for the cab is more than likely around the corner the eight speed the the theoretical the rumored, the right. rumored transmission <laughs> right the eight speed is coming soon and it's like that six speed is just insufficient I, I, I've made numerous videos complaining about the six speed and how when you're towing, it does sixth and fifth back and forth all the time. It just doesn't downshift fast enough. The engine, like, I don't know why, but the Cummins would rather lug and feel like it's like about to literally bend a rod or something like that. Just at, at 1100 RPMs, it's pushing 28 PSI. It's like, that's ridiculous, you know? And I understand, yes, it's an inline diesel versus a V-Cod yeah. for, for configuration, but it's like that six speed, the AS69, it's the AS69 RC. It's a bulletproof transmission it's absolutely amazing but six gears is insufficient when you would like to have more flexibility in being precise when you're towing heavy okay now, and, and you're talking about you know often towing you know ten thousand pounds and 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 above sometimes right so my trailer with the load is usually about sixteen thousand pounds okay so it's pr pretty heavy not yeah. not not ridiculous not at the max you know consistently but pr pretty heavy so um so i wouldn't recommend a new ram and i wouldn't recommend 19 to 20. and so what does that leaves us for the ram if you want to go hot shot full time i understand some of the used car prices are, are ridiculous but i think the two best years that you can get from a ram is a 16 through 18 ram uh, with the Ison. So get a Cummins with an Ison with a four by four. That is by far the two best, most reliable years you can get. And you'll probably be able to do 300,000 miles, almost no issues. Okay. And then at 300,000, you might have the turbo go out. You might yeah. have the injectors, something along those lines, but 16 to 18 Ram, those are the two most reliable uh, years. Or if you, and that's for hot shotting. If you're going to do, if you're, if you're going to use it for home or you just need a vehicle, like, you know, to commute, uh, get a Ford, get a 2021 or 2022. Those are just, those are really good personal trucks. Yeah. And we've, when we do our testing, we've, I've been really impressed with the new power stroke Ford, uh, not just for, like you said, so, you know, the downhill performance, also efficiency has been pretty um, uh, significant um, and also speed. I mean, 
it's yeah. so fast. Uh, well, sometimes when you're working, you know, speed means you're burning fuel. But, you know, sometimes you want to step on it and actually feel the acceleration. Right. Yeah. I've, it's never been easier towing to pass going uphill than in that Ford. I don't know what they did, but they that the new Power Stroke with the 10 speed is just so fast, even fully loaded. And if you drive normal, it gets way better MPG. The problem with with that truck, and the reason I don't recommend it for hot shotting, is consistently, now it's actually pretty common. First, the first six months of 2020, they have a recall for the transmission, something about the planetary gears, common apparently issue. Um, so there's been a recall for that, but that's for the first six months of the 2020s. And then uh, I consistently have problems with those trucks at like 65, 70,000 miles. Hmm. The transmission starts to shift much harder and so it's like the fuel savings that you'll have if you're doing a lot of mileage better put that into a transmission because <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's really what it comes down okay. to so if you're gonna get a ford then maybe you can get like a commercial warranty that d- like and make sure it's a bulletproof commercial warranty that'll cover your powertrain to two hundred thousand miles if they offer a commercial warranty even if it's six grand get it because you will be using that commercial warranty to replace your transmission if it, if, it, if you can get a really good warranty for two hundred thousand miles at least um, if you can get that do it so how how many miles what is the highest mileage ford recent ford have you seen or used uh, so how I mean, far have you pushed them so I, about a, uh, about six to eight months a year ago, I think I turned in my Ford. It was the highest mileage to 83,000 miles. I think it was 81 or 83, something like okay. that. I, it was an enterprise rental, same thing. And I turned it in right at that time because they didn't have any trucks to give me back. And I was like, all right, then you can just take this one back. Okay, gotcha. So, so you started as a driver, then you kind of started on your own, right? Kind of went there. Um, so how did it progress? I mean, was it always kind of an uphill I mean, it sounds like a fairy tale story. I mean, you're pretty successful, but it's a lot of hard work, right? Right. And I, I mean, it's it, a lot of hard work is an understatement. Oh, geez. It's, it's really a ridiculous amount of effort. And if you don't want to quit as an entrepreneur or as a small business owner, if you don't want to quit every day, you're doing it wrong. Because literally you want to quit every day and there's doubt in your mind every day because it's like you don't know. It's like there's so many uncertain things. And because you're so small, you know that anything could put you out of business. Literally any little thing could put you out of business. It's like if one driver right now, one of my drivers, if he has a small accident, it's like that that could be there's a chance that it could be devastating. Right. Mm-hmm. And and so really it, it's it's that challenging to be an entrepreneur and then try to grow. Um, and, and, and that's that's fine. But I, I want to encourage you that you reach a stage where it does become extremely rewarding. And I really think in the last six years, I've never been happier because I now understand when you're doing something you're totally passionate about. It just time flies. You know, when I'm sitting, working on the business, making sure things are running smoothly, working on my website, stuff like that. It's like doing all this back office stuff, making sure things are going really well in the company. It's like, I love it. I really do. And so I'm, I'm really excited that I'm at this stage now. But to get here, it was just an excruciating amount of work. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I, I can kind of tell that just looking from the side and TFL truck and TFL car started in a similar way we, we're not hauling freight on the road uh, but you know we started as a very small you know uh, just a youtube channel right? right so and now we have about 10 employees and on and on and on so um and of course a lot of the credit is to our ceo our fearless leader roman so but um and it's not it wasn't easy i mean he's got a lot of stress right <laughs> built in his shoulders and stuff like that right. so so definitely um, if it looks all rosy, uh, there is probably a lot going on in, underneath, right? right. Uh, just just to make it just to make it there, right? Definitely. So, so I mean, you do a lot of videos. I mean, you're pretty. I, I think your channel. So if somebody's starting out, have you had a lot of like people reply to you and say, "Oh, you made it easier for me," or "You helped me out," or how does that work? So that's actually one of the like that's actually one of the things that I like the most. Okay, when people walk up to me when when I was on the road, you know, a couple weeks ago I was still on the road full time, and when I was on the road, people would walk up to me at the truck stop and they'd go like, "Hey, Alex, 
I owe you money because you've helped me like change my life. Like I was broke, I was homeless, and I, you know, I had my pickup truck and I was getting ready to get rid of the pickup truck. But then I was like, let me give Hotshot a try. And I watched some of your videos. You helped me out with making sure I don't make certain mistakes that can put you out of service and stuff like that. And now I like I really owe you money because you've literally changed my life. And so when those times occur, when that stuff like that happens, it's that's the reward that I like to hear, that I've genuinely actually truly helped someone become more successful or elevate their life before, like from when they started watching me to when they're done watching me, I really hope that I had a positive impact on them financially. And that just requires a little bit of time, a little bit of searching. You know, I think I'm over 400 videos or something like that. And so it's like I've been, and I, I consistently stay on the same topic, all about hot shotting and driving across the country, stuff like that, and how to, you know, how how to grow, how to take on drivers, how to take on owner operators, all these things. And it's one of, it's just really important to just search some of the older videos because that content is there. It's available and all it takes is just some time. Yeah, I gotcha. I gotcha. So, so then uh, I want to touch on this because this year I, I kind of bit the bullet and I, I've always wanted to get a commercial driver's license uh, or at least for the last few years, because we are towing heavier um, and heavier, and uh, the current or the next uh, generation heavy duty dually trucks, I mean, they're starting to push 35, 36, 37,000 pounds. Oh, there's no. somebody, somebody's trying to get in here. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we're in their studio. Um, so the heavy duty trucks are getting more and more capable. Um, we try to do those videos where we push them to the extremes right. because if the truck behaves a certain way in the extreme, you can kind of see that and also that means if it does that well it will do anything well right right so anything that, less than the extreme it'll right. do really well if it can do the extreme really well right so that's, so that's, that's what, a good test yeah so that's what we're trying to do with the i gauntlet and some of the other fuel efficiency testing that we do so and we work with mr truck as you know uh ken sundling uh who's a great uh, you know partner and friend um, on our youtube channel for heavy towing projects and he has decades of experience but I was like, you know, I need, you know, I want to be able to drive myself too. But, but, and it's, it's like opening another can of worms. <laughs> it's, it's pretty, pretty big can. Uh, and here's my, I'll, I'll explain a little bit and then I want to see your perspective on okay. this. Uh, because, so, first of all, I enjoyed doing the um, written test um, because um, I was studying and it sounds like, it sounds, you know, weird like why would you want to go to school right and right. why would you want to study but but it, i love what i do right. right like you were saying so you love doing you know owning your own business and doing all these things um i also love trucks so it was easy for me so it's easy for me to learn about trucks so i enjoyed that i learned new things you know n learned about air brakes and big rigs right okay. and all those regulations and uh passed my um written test and there's several of them, by the way. And then there's endorsements, like uh, hazardous materials endorsements, and maybe you know, like bus endorsements if you're carrying passengers, and mm -hmm. on and on and on. It's very complex. And then the driving test and the, actually the inspection test and the driving test were very hard. Right. So not easy. Uh, finally, I went to school, the Southwest uh, Truck Driving School in Phoenix. Okay. Um, they helped me out. I was, I was there for an intense, intensive class, and I finally passed my inspection and test. But now, I, I have a driver's license that says commercial driver's license. There you go. Fun, cool, yeah. right? But that's not over. That's just the beginning. Right. <laughs> uh, and the reason why it's the beginning is because, let's say I'm going on a trip, on a short trip, 70 miles. You know, I need to go film over here with a trailer. Mm -hmm. I, I need to log that, too. You know, in, mm. in, in, in theory, right? Wait, and, really? Well, or do I? I don't think so. So, um, but there's different regulations in different states, right? So, can you explain? So, I want to get your perspective on this. Um, big trucks, commercial driver license. How did you approach this, first of all? Uh, well, I don't have a commercial driver's license. I mean, I was, I've been thinking about it for the longest time about getting it. And the reason I say that is because in February of 2022, the law does go into effect that you are then required to take school. I know you went to school, so good for you. You're learning it the right way. Yeah. But technically, right now, as of this time, you do you, not until you February 2022. Right. right. You, you can literally, to. just like you did with your regular driver's license, you go in there, you take your drive test. Or no, you go in there, you take, excuse me, you take your knowledge portion. They give you your permit. 
And then you come back and you schedule a drive test. It's the same thing with the CDL right now. And in February of 2022, that does end. It goes away because now you are required to do school. So uh, to answer your question, though, um, generally, this a commercial driver's license is that. You're hauling commercially. So, I mean, yes, you are working. You are doing yes. videos. And but you're not transporting passengers. You're not transporting um, Goods freight for or anything. Money. Right. Right. You're not. So generally speaking, you, do you have a time card? Well, no. Well, I, I use an app. Well, I, we haven't done testing this week, this this year yet. So so I'm still learning about this, which is like which is why I like that you're here. Okay. You know, because because I can learn from you as well. So I, I got uh, like a log app, right? Yeah, but you don't need a log because two reasons, okay? First of all, there's a 150 air mile radius. So if you stay within 150 air miles, you don't need to do logs, okay? That's number yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Number two, if, you're, uh, if you have a time card, if you're a time card employee, which you just clock in, clock out, right. then you use the time card exemption. So in reality, that example they gave me, if you're doing 70 miles, you don't need to do anything. Right. You just 70 miles sure. out, 70 miles back. There yeah. you go. That's less than 150 air miles, and you're a time card employee, so it doesn't matter. You wouldn't even have to – plus, you're not even hauling anything, so you shouldn't even have to worry about any of it. Right. Any, and, like, what are you driving? Are you driving a commercial vehicle? Like, are you driving over 26,000, or would it be, like, a just a pickup well, truck? Well, f- for some of these tests, I want to haul 35,000 pounds on a trailer. Trailer weight. So this would be over 26, and 26,000 pounds is basically kind of your combined weight – limit uh, where you know over it or below it uh, for commercial purposes but dude i've heard um different things where people say um andre you know you're hauling we, we usually use water ballast okay right. so we, sometimes we use water ballast sometimes we use vehicles heavy heavy equipment that we haul mm-hmm. as as a as a as a show right um but they're like you make money on the videos so you're hauling for money. So people people will extrapolate, you know, and, and do all this stuff. Um, so bottom line, I really like the process mm-hmm. because I feel I have, I know a lot more about trucks. I can actually drive an air brake truck, uh, big big rig, That's good. because you know I know what to check for, I know what to do, I, I know what to look for, and safety, 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 right? right. So and just for my personal. For my personal standpoint. And just to add in there, an air brake truck isn't just semis. I think that Freightliner M2 that you guys did, yes. that was an air brake truck also, exactly. right? Yeah. So even something that's like, and that's considered medium duty, technically. Yeah, it's like class five, class six. Right, and so yeah. even a truck like that has air brakes. And so it's like, in reality, and that one would require a CDL and it would require an air brake. And you know what else, uh, which is funny, uh, the big motorhomes have air brakes. That too. But they're exempt, because of course. That's recreational. <laughs> that's recreational, right. So if you're 95 years old I know. and you barely can see, you can drive a Prevo uh, big 45-foot bus right. with air brakes. That weighs just like 60,000 pounds or yes. 50,000 pounds, and you can pull a trailer as big as you want, and it doesn't make any sense yeah, at all. It, it does not. It does not. So, so that's kind of interesting how you approached it. Um, from this standpoint, and also smaller loads. I'm assuming sometimes you haul short distances, sometimes you go long distance, right? Right. But regardless, if you are on the road, right, I think the law goes is if you're on the road more than seven days a month, you have to do logs. And so it's like the only way you don't have to do logs if you're on the road less than seven days or you're doing 150 air miles or less or you're a time card employee, right? I mean, then because some... they can track the number of hours you Correct. were away. Right, exactly. Okay. So now the the main thing is though when when you're doing short trips, if you're a full time driver, you still have to log hours because those short trips will never become long tri- long trips. And so yeah. it doesn't matter. You can't you willy nilly use one whenever you want. If you're gonna do logs, you have to do logs. You know, it's that simple. And so because you're not on the road all the time, you don't have to do logs. You know, you guys probably don't go out more than you know. It's not like you're ever driving more than 150 miles one way ever. Well, it's it could be you know when the new trucks comes out, uh, we may be towing once a week, right? So we may do this week a uh, couple of trips, a couple of trips the next week, and then we have a lull. You know, no new trucks are here. You know, we're in the office for a month. We go off-roading. We do other things. Right, but so still, you're not going up and down. But you're not on the road, right? You're not right. away from your actual location. Which is here. Yeah. Right, so you're not away from the office for more than seven days, right? Right. Right, so you, you leave one day, you come back the next day, you go, you know, yeah, so yeah. it's... it's it, 
honestly, you, you shouldn't have to worry about logs at all. And not to mention, it's not like you're trying to drive this big vehicle and then say you're a farmer. And that's why you didn't get your CDL. That's not what you're doing, right? right. You did the right thing. You actually went and got your CDL. Yeah. So even if a DOT officer pulls you over and says, hey, let me see the paperwork for this load. Now, I'd recommend probably having like a rental agreement with whoever's giving you the load. Right. So if you're renting a tractor or something like that, have, something, yeah. have a short like a rental agreement saying, hey, they're letting me rent it for the video. And here's what we're doing. We're doing this video, right? But even if the DOT officer pulls you over, he would never give you a violation for not having logs. The only violation he would give you is operating a commercial motor vehicle without a commercial driver's license. And you already solved that. So yes. really, you have, to, you have nothing to worry about. Well, thank you. Well, that's, that's why I invited you on the show. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> because, because as a business owner, you have to read all those documents oh. and all those uh, regulations. And yeah. uh, isn't that fun read? Yeah. <laughs> and it's just so exciting. Oh, my goodness. Um, so, yeah, I would say, you, honestly, Andre, you have nothing to worry about. So how do you do logs? I mean, because you or your guys, I should say, because you're kind of now managing right. a lot of these people. Uh, what's like the current... Um, thing like app on your phone or how do you track all that stuff? Um, so really it comes down to three things, right? So um, there's an ELD, that's an electronic logging device that connects to your truck, right? That's what records when your truck is actually moving. It's electronic logging device. And that does, uh, that records your driving status. That's called RODS, R-O-D-S. That's record of duty status, right? Which another name for it is I believe HOS, which is hours of service, right? So it's like your ELD, records your time, right? How do you plug it in? Uh, through the, the OBD2. Okay, so, right? so, so a anything... main truck, let's say Ram, Ford, whatever, GM, so you connect this device, yep. um, and there you go, okay. It plugs in, and the, the my current ELDs, they have actually cellular, and so they connect, they can give you hotspots, so they connect to the you know cell towers, and the current ELDs that I use have e uh, dash cams as well. So now it's actually kind of neat because now I just get a dash cam and an ELD all in one and it works really well. If the drivers ever need hotspot, they can have it. So um, the new ELDs are good. And, but generally it breaks down like this. You have a 14 hour shift for the day. That means the maximum that you can work in one day as a truck driver, as a professional driver is 14 hours. From that 14 hours, you're only allowed to drive 11. So the other three hours can be used for loading, unloading, stuff like that, where you're actually working on or around the truck, but not driving. So 11 hours of your 14 can be driving. Now, consecutively driving, you can only do a maximum of eight hours before you have to stop and take a 30 minute break. That's required. So if you wake up in the morning, first thing, you can drive your eight hours, take a 30 minute break, and then finish up your other three, and then there's your 11. Okay, and that helps you track it. And what if you're trying to push beyond those limits? Does the ELD, does it control your truck or does it send you an alert? Uh, does it have any um, enforcement? No, in? no, 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 it doesn't. So okay. um, generally, absolutely, that, man, that would be ridiculous if that happened, dude. Okay. That would be terrifying. Okay, I'm sorry I mentioned talk, it. Talk about government overreach. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's pretty bad already. But still, that would be absolutely ridiculous. And I would say borderline unsafe if you are in violation and your truck decides to stop on you because it's like, what if it's stopping at, at a terrible time? It's like, who in do you sue place. then? Yeah. It's like, then you sue the ELD company and they would instantly fight that law and get rid of it. So uh, I don't think that's ever going to happen. And that would be a bad idea if it ever does. But generally speaking, is it would just be a violation that doesn't get removed from your ELD. So from your device, it would mm -hmm. never get removed. Okay. And what that means is when you're going 100 miles down the road later, like, you know, 100 miles later, you, you get inspected with a DOT officer, right? You guys have way stations in Colorado yeah, totally, all totally. over, yeah. right? So it's like when he inspects you, he will then see you do, that you did that mm -hmm. and he will give you a violation and that then increases your safety score which then increases your insurance premiums because now you're an unsafe driver and it just spirals out of there so if you do that consistently uh i mean you shouldn't be doing that at all just yeah. i mean that's illegal you're breaking laws right so you shouldn't be doing that at all but if you get consistently keep getting caught it, you could essentially shut down your business because then customers don't want to work with you because they pull up your safety score that's public and so they see hey you're an unsafe driver 
you know, we don't want to hire you. Right, and, right. and I had a couple of violations and at the same time as some other drivers got my violations too. So the company got a bunch of violations all at once. And for the first time ever, I had a couple of brokers tell me, hey, we can't work with you. Your safety score sucks. Mm-hmm. And so the only way you fix that is you go get some clean ones, you know? So you address the problems, you try to talk to your drivers, you look at what you did wrong, and then you go get some clean ones and that lowers your safety score back down and then you're in the clear. Yeah, because I mean, those regulations, obviously, you know, it, it works both ways. You know, it's really hard to work, you know, with those, but they're in place for safety, you know, on and on and on. You can argue both sides. Uh, but, you know, my my uh, cousin-in-law also has a, his own transport company as mm-hmm. well. Uh, they mostly haul cars, actually. Okay. And um, same, same story. I mean, uh, it's difficult, you know, to actually have a profitable business. Mm-hmm. And sometimes those regulations... You know, it can stop you in the middle of a mountain pass, right? Right. Now you have to rest, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not easy to navigate, basically. Right. And and I'm a morning person. So it's like when I got just got, let's say I've been sitting around, right? When you're sitting around waiting for a load that is off-duty time, the FMCSA has made that clear in their questions. Sitting around waiting for a load is off-duty time. So imagine you're sitting, right? You wake up in the morning, you're okay, you're twiddling your thumbs waiting for a load, right? You're on the, on your phone, on social sure. media, playing video games, whatever. You're not working technically, and FMCSA has made that clear. And so then at one o'clock, you get a load. So now you've been up for seven hours. Yes. At one o'clock, you get a load. Yes. You're like, oh, snap. Okay. I no, kind of wouldn't mind it. a nap, actually. Yeah. You know, but hey, you got a load, so you got to go pick it up. You're like, well, I've been sitting around, so I need money anyway, so let's go get this money. So you go get this load. That means your shift has now started. So if you start at one o'clock, your shift will be over 14 hours later. That's at three in the morning. Or, yeah. Right. right three or, in the morning. Or whatever. Yeah. Right. And so now you, the ELD is technically forcing you to drive well into the night when you're going to be fully exhausted and tired. And so it's like in those situations, you just ha- you got to take it safe and you gotta, like, hey, today I'm not going to maximize my clock and that'll affect my, affects my profit a little bit. But tomorrow we'll do my normal 10 hours like normal and we'll get a new clock and then we'll start driving again with a new 11 and a new 14. Yeah, so, so you, it, you gotta judge it, it does you affect the revenue. Yeah, it, it can affect revenue. Right. And it can affect your customers waiting for the load, whatever it may be. And there's exemptions for, what is it, you know, f- frozen goods or livestock or other, <laughs> other right. weird things, right, that, right. That, that, that people haul. Right. So. And, I, dude, I did full, even though I'm, I'm, I mean, I could probably get away with not doing logs with your car. Right. Because technically, we, like, well, I'm not transporting. Like, I'm transporting for you as a friend. Now, the reason I ran logs the whole way was because I literally knew that I'm g- taking this truck and grabbing this trailer because it's going to go into the fleet. So, so this we is a commercial this vehicle. A little bit. So um, this is a whole different story. Uh, I recently purchased a Buhanka oh. van, which is a Russian van, uh, which is, uh, was crazy for me because I bought it sight unseen in Russia and got shipped to New Jersey. And we did a video uh, with Roman and I did the v- podcast and the video two months ago. And, and Alex said, I'll, I'll help you out. Yeah, just, I commented. Just, um, you commented in the video and, and here we are. And you actually went to New Jersey, but you picked up a new truck and a trailer. Right. right? So I grabbed the truck from Georgia. It was that, that it's actually, actually not a new truck. It has 24,000 miles, but there was diesel in the def system. And I talked about it in the recent video, um, how it, it was probably some, somebody's mistake. We don't know exactly who's, but, um, so the truck was done from service, 24,000 miles on the truck. And then I bought a new trailer in Pennsylvania where I always get my trailers up in PA. And so then I'm sitting in Pennsylvania, literally hour, 30 minutes from New Jersey. So it worked out really well. But the moment I connected to that trailer, and I actually kept logs all the way from Georgia, and so it's like right now I'm not in a rush because I actually kind of have to do a 34-hour restart, so it works out really well that mm-hmm. we get to do the podcast and whatnot. But I, for, I did all my logs. The moment I picked up my truck, it had ELD in it already because my driver dropped it off. And so then I drove from Georgia to PA. From PA, I got my trailer, and I'm doing logs the entire time. Picked up the van, yes. and I did logs from New Jersey all the way to Colorado. Because technically, yes, I'm not getting paid, right? I, I mean, I, I know I said right, I'll right. do it for free. Dude, this is going to be yeah, fun. Exactly. It's going to be great. You're helping me out as a friend. Yeah. Right, and I'm literally helping you out for, as a friend. But I didn't want to take the chance because that would be a much harder explanation to the DOT than just to log. 
right? Than literally just to log. Yeah, let me explain this to you. Yeah. And so sometimes it's better just to follow the laws, even though technically you could get away with it. You know, technically I wasn't supposed to do logs, but I did. And that's why I picked it up Monday. And I'm, I literally only got here Thursday. It took me three and a half days to go from New Jersey to Colorado. That's so slow. It's so slow. You have no idea. It's, oh, gosh. That's literally like a two-day drive if you're in a car, you know, literally a two-day drive. Yeah, totally. But, but you were also filming, so thank you very much. And we have a video uh, on TFL Truck, and we'll, we'll, we'll do more videos with our van. Uh, where you'll see, you know, some of your shots from the road right. and loading the tr- the van and all that stuff. So thank you. No problem. So it, it you know, I I did the, I did logs and I'm I'm glad I brought it. Everything was was you know good. Um, no issues with the van. And it's funny because like most of the scales were closed. I only had to pull in somewhere in Nebraska and that's it. And I was good to go. Colorado was closed. And I know Colorado's pretty aggressive actually. So, but generally speaking, like the the time that you follow all the laws and you do a good job. Of course, nobody bothers you. <laughs> That's just how it works, you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of like insurance, right? right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, as long as it and everything, it's thank you for bringing the van. It's, um, it's kind of like the first morning, uh, we just saw it, and I just saw it for the first time. So, uh, we'll do more videos with it, and that actually we finally got it to start to yep. drive. It kind of it drives okay. Yeah, I'm very uh, pleased with my little Buhanka van, which is a UAZ. Uh, this Russian four-wheel drive, actually kind of a camping van right. in a way because it's built already as a camping van. So th- that was pretty cool. So that that's really cool. So thank you. So first of all, um, thank you for the feedback about kind of the trucks and your experience with them because I think that's very valuable and something that I cannot usually do in a week, mm-hmm. you know, actually learning about the truck and learning all those things. Also, thank you about um, for the RAMs. You mentioned the transmission by name, uh, by its code, right. because it's very important because RAM actually has several different transmissions that they offer. <laughs> I know. It's so annoying. RAM, <laughs> please, for goodness gracious, just stop putting four different transmissions behind the same engine and then detuning half of them. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, that's an exaggeration. But, yeah. but still, it's like, why? Just yeah. offer the heavy duty in the 2500s. But, you know, the AS69RC is expensive. That's yeah, so this is the Ison transmission. It's a six... Six speed still, like you mentioned, uh, but it's just really heavy duty, mm-hmm. really, uh, really uh, strong and reliable. They also, the 68 RFE is the other six speed transmission that they use. And um, actually, we have a camper, four wheel camper Ram truck okay. um, in our fleet now that we're working with four wheel campers uh, on reviewing the camper and reviewing the truck and all this stuff. And it's a 3500 Ram, okay. brand new, 2021. Wh- what transmission? Uh, uh, 68 RFE. Oh, no. So, hey, I had a 2021 literally uh, burnt up second gear clutch or something like that. S- the, the driver t- uh, checked out the dipstick, smelled terribly burnt. It was just ridiculous. 2,380 miles. Lost the transmission. 60 while RFE. hauling. While, yeah, pulling well, a trailer. Yeah. But 2,380 it, miles. Yes. It That's ridiculous. Not. So, so some of the history with RAM, and of course, I don't work for RAM, and I don't know every detail that they work on, but they've had a lot of issues over the years, and they've updated that transmission. They weren't waiting and sitting along, but they've uh, been updating it, and it's, and it's been there. I don't know, 10, 11, 12 years in different iterations of it, different versions of it. Yeah, I mean, hold on. Doesn't it go back like a it very goes long back, time? It goes like back the further, probably. Second gens. Because I thought the 48, 48RE, that was that. And now it's the 48 six, is the four speed version of, of this 60. current six speed, yes, right? They yes. just added overdrives. One. Now, I, I realize, guys, that I'm not super mechanically inclined, and so I'm roughly, I'm estimating. Yeah. But it's something along those lines where they just do incremental improvements on a garbage product. It's still garbage. You can't in- increment garbage. It doesn't matter. Guys, your transmission sucks. Just get rid of it. Like, it's not that hard. But no, they want to offer a cheaper truck because they want to be cheaper than Ford. More, more affordable. And so yes. they uh, inevitably, the customer becomes, you know, hey, we can ruin the customer's experience and sell them a crappier truck at a, at a, at a better price point. You know, and some customers, they don't care. Some do, like me. <laughs> I, I won't ever buy a 60 well, RFE. Well, yeah, but if you're not towing, right, if you're not pushing it to the limits, you know, maybe that transmission is okay. Yeah, but and, then it's detuned. And the engine makes less power, less less torque. Right. right. And so right. now your truck isn't as fast. And um, I drive that Ram that I pulled in, that I delivered your van on, yeah. that is a 60 RFE. And the 890 horsepower is a joke. The Ford will literally run circles around that. 
And the Ford, what do they do? They put their thousand pound, a thousand horsepower, or no, a thousand torque in the twenty five hundred, in the thirty five hundred, in the thirty five hundred dually, yeah. everywhere. Yeah, why can't Ram do that? Yeah, I don't know. It's a different mentality. I mean, GM also puts their kind of the high horsepower and torque engine, or the same engine tuning into all of their heavy duty trucks um, as well as whereas 2500 3500 rem doesn't do it rem does a different thing um, as we said and people make mistakes sometimes right. people buy a 2500 uh, ram and sometimes they call me and be like i'm so happy i just got the ice and transmit <laughs> no you didn't ice and, is and, not and, available in the 2500 in rams and then also like you said you're dually I almost assumed you had an ISIN. Nope, it has a 60 RFE. I know, it's so ridiculous. It's a choice. It's a right. choice. You have, to, you have to tell the dealer, and many dealers may not know or don't care or whatever. So you have to advocate for yourself and say, hey, you know, I, I, I'm going to be to- towing all the time. I need that upgrade. I need the high output engine. I need that transmission. Right. And the easiest way to tell, by the way, guys, is the dipstick for the transmission, the yellow transmission dipstick. If now I want I want to make sure I don't I want to, on the record so that's correct. Okay. So if the transmission dipstick is in front when you're looking at your engine bay, you just pop your hood and you're looking at your engine bay. If the transmission dipstick is on the left hand side on the passenger side, right? Uh-huh. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I gotta yeah. I gotta it's pull okay. this up. <laughs> if it's on the passenger side, it's a 68 RFE. If it's on the driver side, then it's the AS 69 RC. Correct. Right. And you want the AS69RC, that's the ice and transmission. Um, I believe that's correct. Can you pull that up real quick? Man, I'm doubting myself now on uh, camera. That's okay. <laughs> I know we, we want to be always correct. Uh, hold on a second. Let me look at uh, Ram Heavy Duty. Let's see. Ram Heavy Duty um, 68 RFE dipstick. <laughs> uh, hmm. Maybe search engine bay. Yes. Okay, there's a right there. Picture it. Oh wait. So you st- no, you see the brake booster uh, tank right thing right here, the one right in the middle with the yes, yeah. Right. Uh, click yeah. on that picture. Does it say AS six nine RC on there? Yeah, the actual dipstick says that. Right. Yes. Does, is that what it says? Yes. Okay. So there you go. Then that is correct. So in front of the driver's side, you open up your engine bay. In front of the driver's side, I'm glad we double checked because yeah. I don't want to get it mixed up. But in front of the driver's side, if your transmission dipstick is right next to your brake booster in front of the driver's side, that is the good transmission. And it actually says Mopar in this picture. Uh, I can also see this Mopar AS68 RC. Um, a, uh, automatic transmission fluid only. That's what the dipstick says. Right. So it says 68. That might be like a 2014 or something like that. But the, the ones in the newer trucks 69. have the 69, correct? Yeah. yeah. So it'll have the correct code. And AS, I, I believe that's an ISIN designator. Right. So, um, so yes. So if you want that high output motor and you're not sure, the dealership or the dealership doesn't know or they don't have the sticker, if it's a used truck, something like else, pop the hood, check it out, take a look, uh, make sure you're buying the correct truck right. Uh, right. that you want to buy, right? Right. Yeah, so that's, that's very important. Yeah, and, and the important, it's like you're spending your hard-earned money, you know? It's like you might as well get the exact thing that you want. It's like you fight for the thing that you want because, it, I mean, that's your dollars, your hard-earned dollars. So, um, yeah, so driver side, AS69RC right on the dipstick, that's the good one. Passenger side, if the dipstick is on the passenger side when you open up your hood, that's the 68 RFE, not so good one. There you go. So, so yeah, that, that's really important. And, um, yeah, so thank you for kind of um, letting me know and letting us know. Uh, about some of your experiences because, you know, it's important when you're using your truck, like you said, 700,000 miles in different trucks, you're learning those different things that I may not know and and some of our audience doesn't know. So thank you very much. And and I like, I I appreciate that. No problem. I mean, you know, it's, it's been super expensive. It's like the, (laughs) I can tell you right now that the truck that I had, my first, my first silver truck that had an original transmission. The only thing I ever did on it was fluids and filters. That's this was a 16 or a 15? Uh, it was a 2015. 15. I bought it in November of 2015. Yeah. And it went with the original transmission all the way up until I sold it, till 492,000 miles. The AS69RC transmission is that reliable and that bulletproof. It's really good. So if you're going to buy a Ram, just buy it with the right transmission or else you'll be having a big bill. You'll be stuck with a big bill. 
and maybe multiple bills. Right. Um, if that transmission keeps having issues, right? Yeah. So, that's the first thing so part. that's uh, that's the important part here. Uh, well, th thank you, Alex. Okay. Um, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for bringing my Russian uh, four-wheel drive van, the Buhanka, and now I can just spend all my free time trying to fix it. Absolutely. Uh, trying to fix my uh, old van. And check check uh, check Alex out at Toe Piglet on YouTube. And also your website, right? Um, right. So on, on the website's always under works, but essentially, if you are lear if you're interested in getting out on the road and, and doing hot shot and trying to, you know, if you already have a pickup truck, especially too, that saves a lot of headache because then all you need is a trailer and you need to partner up with a company. So my website is good educational material, or no, my YouTube channel is good. Excuse me, is good educational material. My website, there's companies posting that they're looking for owner operators. That's people that have their own trucks and trailers. So you could absolutely go to the website if you have equipment and find a company to work with. And I, I have a job on my website right now too, so you could absolutely work with me also. And it's toepiglet.com. Uh, yep, correct? and you can click on jobs right there. Jobs, okay. Okay, and so this is right now the, all the companies and the type of jobs they have available. So um, tons of companies on there looking for, you know, owner operators, individuals that are willing to work. And it's like, um, you know, not, not to get political, but there's, you know, some businesses are requiring certain things. And if you don't want to, you know, if you don't want your boss telling you to do something, it's like you're going to have to be out on the road. But that might be a little bit better than having a nine to five. You know, totally. It depends on your choices, your, what you need to do. And situations, um, right. And, and also, um, what was I going to say? Um, I don't know. It just kind of uh, slipped my mind, but but it's really cool that you're actually you know showing people this. Yeah. Oh, what I was going to say is uh, there's a lot of talk about shortages of drivers too. You know, shortages for tank drivers, you know, tanker drivers, etc., etc., etc. So, um, do you see that too, or what's what's your take on that? I mean, I feel like there's there isn't a shortage of drivers per se. It's just a shortage of new drivers. And the only people that hire new drivers are mega carriers. Big, big giant companies. Right. Uh -huh. It's like the mega carriers, the only reason they have to hire new drivers is because their training program is really good. Right. And when your training program, program is really good, what do you do? You pay your drivers very little. Mm. Right. Because you know you're going to train them. So it just makes sense. Hey, if I'm going to spend a, a ton of money on developing my training, making it really well, I want to hire the people I can pay the least because that'll offset the cost for the training program. Mm -hmm. So you hire the cheapest, newest people. And those people, th that group is dwindling. There's a lot of drivers that just want to be treated like people, not just like a number. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, that's what mega, mega carriers do. They treat you like a number. Hey, dri driver one, two, three, ABC, go get this load. Yeah. You know, they don't say, hey, John, how are you feeling? You know, I did get you a load, you know, whatever the case may be. It's just, a, a, just that's it. You're just filling out orders. Go get a load A, load B, driver one, driver two, that's it. And so that's the issue. I think there's a new drivers are struggling to you are struggling to be found or get interested in trucking. Um, n not necessarily if you have experience. There's 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 a good amount of those. I gotcha. Well, there you have it, guys. So as always, tfltruck.com, topiglet.com, uh, where you can find Alex and everything that has to do with trucking. Yeah. Thank you so much, dude. Thanks.